Hi, I'm Minda Tracy from My Online Training Hub. I'll be taking you through how to use Excel's Power Query and Power Pivot tools to build this interactive dashboard that you see behind me. Before we get started, I just want to set your expectations for this tutorial. First of all, it's going to be at a fast pace. You won't have time to follow along step by step the first time you watch it. But there's a link in the video description where you can download the workbook and data. And of course, you can rewatch the video as many times as you like, pausing and rewinding as required. I'll be using Office 365, but Power Query and Power Pivot are available in Excel 2010 onward, although not in all versions of Excel. So I've included links in the Excel file on which versions of Excel support these tools. Now, some of the steps may appear advanced, but none of it's difficult once you know how, and there's absolutely no programming involved. All right, let's get started. The data I'll be using is four years of HR data that has been compiled by a company called Obviance. They're snapshots of headcount taken at monthly intervals and you can see I've got a CSV file for each month that has been exported from the HR system. Now I'm going to use Power Query to get the data and consolidate it into one table so I can analyze it. And for that I need the folder path. I'm just going to select one of the files and copy the file path to my clipboard. And just before we do that, I want to just show you how big the CSV files are. So altogether, there's about 1.7 megabytes of data just in these CSV files. OK, let's pop over to Excel and we'll get the data with Power Query. I've got Office 365, so my Power Query tools are on the data tab of the ribbon. If you're using Excel 2013 or earlier, then you're going to have a tab dedicated to Power Query. For me, I'm going to get data from a file and from a folder, and this is where I need that file path. So I'm going to control V to paste it in. I don't need the actual file name and I want to get rid of that double quote at the start of the folder path. So I'll click OK. Power Query is going to bring up a list of all the files in the folder. You can see them here. It's just a preview. Now I know that they're all the same format, so I'm going to combine and edit and we'll go straight into Power Query. So Power Query's gone away and it's looked at the first file. It's detected the origin. If I'm not happy with that, I can change it. It's also detected the delimiter, which is a comma. And you can see it's given me a preview of all the columns and they all look fine. So I'm going to click OK. So right now Power Query is getting all of the CSV files and combining them into a single table. And it opens the Power Query editor window. Let me just bring it across to this screen. So you can see it's brought in all of the data. We can see all the columns here. The first column is the CSV file name. Now this could be handy because it's actually a date. I've already got a date field in my data set, so I'm going to delete this column because I don't need it. Let's collapse that pane there so we can see the data a bit better. The other thing I need to check is that the data type has been set correctly for each column. And you can see this one is a date data type. That's the date icon. This is a whole number, text, and so on. The term date I can see here needs to be a date field. And we scroll across, and term reason needs to be text. So while we're here, let's just have a quick look at the data. We've got date and then employee ID. The date is the date that the snapshot was taken. Gender, age, ethnic group, whether they're full-time or part-time, the termination date, if they're terminated, whether they're a new hire in that period, the region for the business unit, the hire date, pay type, whether it's hourly or salary, the termination reason, age group, tenure days and months, and whether they're a bad hire. And that will have a one for a bad hire and zero for not a bad hire. So that's the data we have to work with. Now, if I needed to do any more filtering of the data, I could do so here. I can add more columns and general reshaping and tidying up of my data before I load it into Power Pivot or the data model. I don't need to do any of that in this case. Now, before I load it into the data model or Power Pivot, I'm just going to give this query a name. We'll call it HR Data. And the name I give it here is the name of the table in my Power Pivot model. Okay. I'm ready to close and load. I'm going to choose close and load two, and that way I can specify that I want to add it to the data model, 
but I only want to create a connection. That way I'm not loading it into a worksheet as well as the data model. I only need my data in the file once and that's going to help me keep my file reasonably sized. So Power Query has gone away. It's grabbing that data and loading it into Power Pivot. Now Power Pivot is very efficient at compressing data and that allows me to work with a lot of data while keeping my file size manageable. So you can see it's loaded just over 21,000 rows of data. And if we take a look at how big our file size is now, remember the CSV files alone were 1.6 megabytes, but the file that I've just created, which is this one here, is only 640 kilobytes. And of that 94 are just that worksheet there that I've applied some formatting to. So it's about a third of the size of the CSV files. So that is one of the benefits of working with Power Pivot when you're working with large amounts of data. Now it's not going to compress every data set to a third of its size. It just depends on the type of data you have and I won't go into that now because we don't have a lot of time. Okay, I'm ready to start building the pivot tables that support my dashboard. Let's just take a look at the dashboard and we'll familiarize ourselves with the first pivot table that we, we need to build. So let's build this one first. We need to look at the total active employees and we're breaking them down by the total active and then how many of those were new hires in the period. So in my file that I'm creating my dashboard from, I'm going to insert a pivot table. I'm going to put it on a new worksheet and it's detected that there's a data model in this file and that I might like to use it. So I do, I'll click OK. We can close the queries and connections pane now. We're done with that. Let me just grab this out. We'll just give it a bit more room by putting it up there. Okay, so we want to look at the data by date and we want to count how many employees we've got. So put those two values in. It's sum the employee ID. So let's right click and count them. And let's group these dates by quarters and years as well as months. So we've got our data grouped. It hasn't given us subtotals for the quarters though. So let's turn them on. On the design tab, we'll look at subtotals at the bottom of the group. And here's the problem with counting the IDs. It's fine at the month level, but once we get to the quarter level, it's actually adding up all three months, which kind of makes sense. Except if we have an employee that's present in January, February and March, They've been counted three times. Remember the HR data is a snapshot of all headcount at that point in time. We've got one snapshot per month. So what we need to do is write a measure in Power Pivot that only counts the last month for the quarter. And in the case of the year, we only want to count the last month of the year for the year total. Now Power Pivot measure is similar to an Excel formula, except it's used in the pivot tables value area only. And Power Pivot has its own formula language called DAX. And DAX functions are very similar to Excel functions and they even share some function names. So let's take a look. On the Power Pivot tab, we're going to go measures, new measure. We'll call this employee count. And in the formula bar, which is quite large compared to Excel's, we're going to type in our first function, which is calculate. And what do we want to calculate? We want to count the employee ID and we want to filter it all of the HR data dates where the date equals the max date in the pivot table row. We're going to close max, close filter, close calculate. Let's just check the formula is correct. It is. So in English, what this formula is doing is saying Calculate the count of employee IDs, filtering all of the HR data table dates for only dates that equal the maximum of the date in the pivot table row that that measure is present on. So in the quarter one row, it's going to find the maximum date for the quarter, which will be March, and it will populate it with March as total. Let's just set the number type. It's a whole number with thousand separator. So I'll click OK. I'll just enable that again. And now you can see it's added the new measure and it's populated the quarter total picking up March's figure. And if we scroll down to the year total, you can see for the year it's picked up December's total. And that's exactly what we want. If we have a look at that measure, 
let's just go into manage measures and I'll zoom in on it you can see that it looks very similar to an Excel formula it even uses column names just like Excel tables structured references and this one is a table and column name and this one's the column name obviously so it is quite quick and easy for us Excel users to pick up this new DAX formula language let me cancel and close that so we can get rid of the count of employee because that's incorrect we've got our new measure and it's this ability to write custom measures like this that really sets our pivot apart from regular pivot tables we just couldn't do this with a regular pivot table now the first chart actually requires active employees remember active and what we have here are all employees so we actually need a new measure so let's create another one that's only going to look at active employees and this formula again uses calculate but in this time we can use our employee count measure as the expression and then we're going to filter it on the HR data table where the term date is blank meaning they're not terminated they're still a current employee so that's going to make active employees let's check our formula is correct it is we'll set the number type to whole number and click OK now power pivot is added the measure automatically to the pivot table because I had it selected already so now we've got our active employees and you can see as we scroll down we start to see slightly different numbers as employees drop off so let's remove employee count from the pivot table because we don't need that one anymore and the next thing we need to know for this particular chart is how many new hires we have in each period so we need a new measure we'll call it new hires and it's going to calculate the count of the employee ID filtered on the HR data and the HR data is a new hire so equals yes I'll close parentheses and check the formula and it's correct so what we're doing here is counting the employee ID we don't need to worry about duplicates being counted here because they'll only ever be a new hire once and we're filtering the HR data new hire column to only count employees that have a yes in that column okay so let's set the number type and click OK and we'll get added to our pivot table and you can see now so in quarter four we have 30 new employees out of 300 all right let's visualize this in a pivot chart we'll go with the cluster column that's fine I'm not going to do a lot of formatting here let's hide the value fill buttons and the axis fill buttons and the legend fill buttons I want to keep these expand and collapse buttons so we're going to add a chart title and we'll remove grid lines I want to put my legend at the top that way it takes up less space let's move the legend up there and we'll move the chart title across here I'm going to call this total active employees and we can just make this a little bigger now what we want to do is overlap the new hires column on top of the active employees we just close that so we're going to do a hundred percent overlap and let's make the gap width 50 percent and that'll just make it a little bit easier to see okay I'm going to leave it at that for that chart let's take a look at what the next one is All right we might look at the ethnicity so we're going to insert a pivot table on a new worksheet using the data model as our source so here I need to know the ethnic group and I want to look at that split out by gender and I just want active employees so there's my data let's visualize it in a pivot chart column chart is fine I think I'll also look at that by full-time and part-time okay so let's hide the value field buttons access field buttons and the legend we're going to do our formatting chart title get rid of the grid lines and put our legend at the top I'll just rearrange this quickly of 
call this one actives by ethnic group. Okay, and we can make this a little bigger. All right, that chart's done. One thing I forgot to do is set my pivot table name. So let's give it a name. We'll call it ethnic ethnicity. And we'll give the sheet a name as well. It's just going to make it easy to identify them later. All right, and let's go back to this sheet. This will be actives. And this pivot table will be called actives as well. All right, now the next chart is very similar to the ethnic group. This is one here for tenure. So let's, instead of creating a new worksheet, we're just going to copy this sheet. I'm just holding down control while I copy it and copy and drag. This one will be tenure and this pivot table will be called tenure. And we, so we just want to change the content of this pivot table. So I'll remove the active employees. What we want to do is find the tenure in months. If I drag my tenure in months in, and if I average it, summarize values by average, and actually let's fix the value field settings so that there's some number formatting, just get rid of the zeros, it'll make it easier to see. Okay. Now the issue we have with this, let me move the chart out of the way, is remember we're taking a snapshot of the data at a point in time. So if I look at just one employee, let's put an employee ID filter in here, and we'll look at employee 52994, that's one I looked at earlier. And let's just put the date across the top. So what we see now is at month one they were zero months tenure and each month their tenure increases. But if we look at the average, it's seven. And what we really want to do, instead of averaging each employee's entire time, we want to average all employees at our point in time. So this view of the data isn't what we want. What we need is another measure. So let's so remove date and we'll remove that employee ID. Let's go ahead and create a new measure. We'll call it average tenure months. And the formula again uses calculate to average the tenure in months filtered all HR dates for where the date equals the max is very similar to the one we wrote earlier where it matches the max date. Let's just check the formula. We'll change the formatting to a whole number. Let's click OK. And it's going to add that to our pivot table. So you can see the average tenure measure that we wrote returns a different value. So these are the two this is the implicit measure, the one that we just dragged in for the, from the pivot table field list. And this is the one we wrote. So you can see the average being returned is slightly different. So let's get rid of the implicit measure. So we have the correct measure in our pivot table. It's ready to go. We don't need to make any more changes other than to the title. Okay. So let's take a look at what's next. We've done those two. Let's do actives by region. So I'm going to insert a new pivot table on a new worksheet. This one's region and we'll call the pivot table region as well. So this one is region. We want to see it broken out by full time, part time, and we just want the active employees. Let's Visualize it in a pivot chart. This time I'm going to go with a bar chart. Click OK. Let's get rid of all of the field buttons. We'll do our usual formatting. We need a chart title, no grid lines, and we'll put the legend at the top. OK. So this is actives by region. Let's make this a bit bigger. 
Now, one thing I need to do is rearrange the order of my axis. So I'm just going to select it and then Control 1 to open the format axis and we'll check categories in reverse order. Okay. Actually, one other thing I want to do is get rid of that horizontal axis. So I'm just going to select it and press delete because in this chart, I'm going to put data labels on my values and we're going to put them inside the end, which means we need to make these wider. So I'm going to make the gap width 50% will just allow my chart to have wider bars. And let's change the formatting to white font because it will be easier to read. And just select that one and press F4 to repeat that formatting. Okay, that's better. All right, what's next? So we need to do one for separations and one for the reason for termination. So let's insert a new pivot table on a new worksheet. We'll call this one separations and the sheet the same name. Now, if we just open the Power Pivot window and take a look at the data, we can see there's a column for term date here and one at the end for bad hires. Here it is. So if we look at the options in here, we've got a zero or a one, so we can count the bad hires. And then the term date is going to determine whether they're present or have been terminated. All right, so let's just close that and go back to Excel. We've got to write a new measure for our separations. So we're going to calculate the count of the employee ID, filtering, the HR data where the term date is not blank. Makes sense. If the term date isn't blank, then they're left. So let's check the formula. Oh, I haven't finished my last parentheses. All right. Check the number formatting to whole number and click OK. Now let's just visualize this by the year. That's our separations data. Now we need to know how many were bad hires and because bad hires, that actual field has a one or a zero, we can simply use an implicit measure and count how many bad hires. So you can see quite a lot. We'll rename this bad hires as this name is what feeds through to our pivot chart. And let's insert a pivot chart as a column chart's fine. We'll get rid of all the fill buttons and go through the usual formatting, get rid of the grid lines and put the legend at the top. Actually, what else? The other thing, I'll delete that and let's add some data labels because this chart is going to be squished. We've got plenty of room for data labels. We'll leave them like that. Now, this is how many bad hires are within this number. So we're going to overlap these columns. Let's close that so we can see the options. 100% overlap and 50% gap width. All right. Actually, this one I might put outside the end. Outside end. And this one I'll format white. Let's move this over here. Okay. Let's squish this chart. It's got to be quite small. Actually, if I move this over here, we are going to have more room for the chart to look bigger because these initial years have small values. Okay, so that's our separations. Let's just copy this page, holding down control and left clicking and dragging. And we'll do the term reason. And we'll rename this pivot table. term reason. All right, let's see the field list again. So I need to know the reason for termination. So let's drag that in. And we don't need the bad hires. We just need to know whether it was voluntary or involuntary. And these ones we don't want overlapping. So we're going to make that zero. And we'll give this a new title. Termination reason and that one's done pretty much. We could probably rearrange these so they're stacked. All right, how are we going? Let's have a look. So we've done one, two, three, four, five, six charts. 
All that's left are these headline figures and then the slices. So let's create the pivot tables for the headline figures. We'll insert a pivot table on a new worksheet. Now I'm going to put uh, lots of pivot tables on this sheet, but normally I recommend that you have one sheet per pivot table. That just means that the pivot table has plenty of room to grow and you're not going to run into problems where one pivot table is trying to overlap another. So the first pivot table here is going to be for our total employees, our active employees by gender. So we'll call this gender. And obviously we need to know the gender and how many active employees. Now I've formatted my dashboard sheet. Let's go find it. So here it is. I've put in just some formatting in the cells and this border. Other than that, this is just a regular sheet. There's no special type of sheet for your dashboard. That's nothing you need to import or anything special. It's just a regular sheet. Now you know that I'm going to rename it dashboard and I'm going to move it to the front. I like to have it at the front and all my workings behind. So we can start populating our headline figures. Let's give our dashboard a name. And this is going to be total employees. And to help us visualize this data, I'm going to use some icons and icons are new. You'll find them in the illustrations and then icons. They're only available for Office 365 users and Excel 2019. You need to be connected to the internet to actually access the icon library as well. So I need the male, female, and let's have that one there looks like multiple employees. I also want to grab this one and this one here. All right, let's insert them all and then they're done. Downloads them. We can resize them, just holding them all at the same time. Okay. Let's move these over here. So we've got male, female and employee. So let's make them a little bigger. All right. While we're here, I'll just align them uh, middle. This one, I'm going to format it in the dark greeny color. This one will be the light and this one slightly darker. Okay. So let's just move them into the center of the cell and we're ready to go. All right. So I want to get my total employee figure so I can get that from my headline table. And then I want the number of male employees and the number of female employees. Now you'll notice in the formula bar, let me turn that on so you can see it, that it's used the get pivot data formula. And this is going to ensure that if my pivot table moves or changes shape or grows, it's always going to pick up the correct figure. It doesn't matter if the cell location of that value moves in the pivot table, get pivot data will ensure my dashboard is robust and it doesn't lose that information. All right, I'm going to turn the formula bar off just so we've got some more room. Okay. So the next thing I need to do is just calculate what percentage each gender is of the total. And I'll copy it into here as a formula. All right, so that's my first headline figure done. The next one is for whether they're hourly or salary. So we're going to use this icon. Let's format it. We'll give it the dark green color as well. Blue color. I don't know what you call it. Okay, so this is hourly and salary. So we need a pivot table for that. Let's go into our headline. Insert pivot table on the existing worksheet. So this one is looking at gender and their pay type for the active employees. What I want to do is actually show the values as the percentage of the column total, because if we look at our dashboard, these figures are percentages. So we'll just make our pivot table do the work and calculate the percentages for us. Let's copy these icons across. I'm just holding down control while I left click and drag. We'll put them up there. All right. So I need the men's percentage of hourly and then salary. And 
then women, hourly, and salary. Okay, and the next one is whether they're full-time or part-time. So let's format that one. We'll use the same color, part-time. We'll copy these icons across. We need another pivot table. So I'm just going to copy this one. And I forgot to name the other one, didn't I? So we'll go back and do that as well. So in this case, I don't want the pay type. I want to know full-time or part-time. Now let's give these name. So this is going to be full-time, part-time, and this one is pay type. Okay, let's populate those values. So full-time men and part-time. And the same for the women, full-time and part-time. Okay, what's next? Now we need a little mini chart that shows the breakdown by age. So let's go do that. We'll put it on our headline table again, or sheet. Insert a new pivot table in the existing worksheet. So this one is gender. Actually, we want the gender in the columns and the age group for the active employees. And because this is a mini chart, we're going to insert a pivot chart. And we want to get rid of all the fill buttons. I'm going to get rid of the grid lines and move it to the top for the legend. We'll also give our data labels. And actually, let's make sure they're inside the end. We'll format this so that there's no gap width. We'll just put them closer together, get rid of that. And we'll give it 50%. Just make them a little fatter. We're not going to give this a chart a title because it's hopefully self-explanatory. But we need to make it very small because it needs to fit in that small section at the top or we can get rid of this axis just click on it and delete all right and the other thing i want to do is format the outline of the chart so that it's got no outline that'll just help it blend in it's going to control x to cut it and we're going to paste it in up here we need to resize it a little more okay and we've lost our legend Okay, let's format these in white font. F4 to repeat the formatting. And what we want to do is use color to create relationships between our data. It just makes it quicker for our users to interpret it. And I've been consistent. My male data is in this blue color and the female data is in a more of a dark green. So let's apply that same formatting to the chart because we're also plotting female and male data. So we'll change the colors so that the female is dark and the male is the lighter color. Okay, what's next? Let's have a look. All right, turnover is the last item. So let's insert a new pivot table on the existing worksheet. Now we need a new measure for this because we want to calculate the percentage of turnover. So let's just name the pivot table first while we're here turnover and then on the power pivot tab we're going to do a new measure call it to percent and this one is just going to divide the separations by the active employees so in our divide formula we're referencing measures and by using divide it ensures there's no div errors it's a bit like if error but but better it just does the job we need, hides those div errors. So these are going to be percentages. And we'll just check the formula's all good. Yes, it is. Click OK. It's going to populate it into the pivot table for me. Now all I need to do is add the gender information. And we'll put that there. And we'll look at it by year. OK, so this is our staff turnover figures. Let's go back here. We're going to just copy these icons so holding down control and shift and left clicking and dragging them into place let's give this a heading turnover 
Let's just format these in gray because they're not existing employees. So I want to differentiate them from everyone else who's in the blue and green colors. All right, so now all we need to do is reference the headline figures. So the total turnover and then for the men, it's that and the women, it's that. So quite a high turnover, but that is the total for the last four years. Okay, and now we're ready to bring in our other charts. All we need to do is go to each sheet. So let's start with actives. Let's just move that in a little bit. Select the outer edge of the chart, control X to cut. Go back to the dashboard and control V to paste it in. Let's get rid of that. All right, next one is so the next one we need is ethnicity. So control X and then we'll pop it in here. We'll go back and we'll get the tenure. Control X and paste it in here. All right, let's just zoom over this side a little bit. All right, so what I'm going to do is hold down Alt and Shift and just align these two to the right hand side there. And actually I can move this down a bit and this one, I might make it fit in there. Okay. This needs some more room. Okay. No, I think this chart is filtered at too low a detail. There we go. That's better. So I just use my expand and collapse buttons there. All right, let's bring actives by region in and we'll paste it in here. Let's move it across. Okay. Not going to spend a lot of time on formatting because that's kind of the easy part. Let's paste the separations in. Probably doesn't need as much room as the other ones. And last we want the termination reason. So control X. Pop it in here. All right, so let's make this one a bit smaller. And then this one has room to move. Okay, so it looks like it's coming together, but it's a bit ugly with all those grid lines. So let's get rid of them and instantly it looks a hundred times better. I'm just going to insert some lines to separate each one of these pieces of information, the headline figures. So just draw in the line there and we'll make it a light gray color so it's not too intrusive. So I'm just holding down shift and control while I left click and drag to copy it. And by holding down shift at the same time, it just keeps it aligned to the same axis that the other ones are on. All right, one more. Okay, so I'm just going to minimize the ribbon and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see more of the dashboard. I don't recommend you build the dashboard in anything but 100% because what you find is the images and some of the tools like slices don't render very well. But I'm in a limited space here because I'm trying to film it so that people with a smaller screen can also see the dashboard as we build it. Normally I'd have it on a, a larger widescreen PC. Let's take a look at the slices that we need. So I've got one here for year and then we've got full time or part time, gender, region and ethnicity. So to insert a slicer, I just need to select one of the pivot charts and then on the analyze tab, I'm going to insert slicer. So we need the year, we need the ethnic group, full-time or part-time, and gender, and the region. I'll click OK, and all the slices get inserted at the same time, so that saves me a little bit of time. I'm just going to move these ones over here, and 
I'm going to resize them all together while they're all grouped because I want them all the same width. So I'll move the ethnicity down, move this one up here. Let's resize it a little. While I'm here, actually, I'm going to make this one two columns wide because there's not much text to squeeze onto those buttons so they can fit in there with just two buttons across and the same for gender. And then the region. Okay. Let's just make sure that the ethnic group is the right size. All right. I'm just going to select all the slices, hold down shift and just align them so that they're distributed evenly vertically. All right. And that just gives me equal space between each one. All right. And the year one comes up here. Now it's going to be two columns wide as well and I can resize it so that it fits. All right, let's just change the header on there. So I'm right click, slicer settings. We want a header to say year. And this one needs tidying up as well because FP doesn't really mean a lot. So let's say full and part, BU region. Let's change that just to say region. So I'll delete the BU. And let's change this to say ethnicity so that it fits in. All right. So our slices are all set up, except at the moment, if I click on one of the items, it only filters this one chart. So what we need to do is assign the slices to the charts that we want them to filter. And we'll start with the year one. I'm going to right click and then report connections, resize this so we can see. Now this is where it's important to give your pivot tables a name because when we're working with the slices, we need to know which pivot table we want them to attach to. So I actually don't want it to filter the actives pivot table because you can see the chart here has the year information in it. I don't want to filter it. I want that all of the years always present in that chart. So I'll click OK. All right, let's rinse and repeat for the other slices. Right click, report connections resize this window so we can see them all. Okay. So I want it to filter active age, gender, pay type, separations, and term reason. I don't want it to filter the ethnic group, the tenure in months, whoops, or the region because it's already broken out by full and part time. So I'm going to click okay. Let's do the gender one. So this one is just region separations and term reason because all of the other charts have the gender already broken out. All right. Region is next. So this one is everything but the region. Obviously you could filter that as well, but I just think it's better to have all the regions present. It gives context. And if I filtered to just show one region in this chart, it would kind of be pointless. And lastly, let's do ethnicity report connections. We want age, gender, pay type, turnover region, separations and term reason. So we don't want these two because it's already broken out by ethnicity. So our slices are all connected now. If I click on FT, all of the charts that should adapt to show just full time do so. I can clear the slicer. I can look at just one region. I could look at one region for one ethnicity. And you can see the slices are additive. So as I keep filtering, the charts get filtered further and further. So it allows the user to really focus in on the data that they want to investigate. So let's just clear the slices. They're all set to go. Next, we want to look at a little bit of color formatting. It's important that the use of color in your dashboard helps the user interpret it. And one way you can do this is to be consistent in the color used for a data type. You can see I've done that here with the male data is in this sort of light blue and female data is in green. And I've been consistent wherever that data type is present. And we can see here we've got full time and part time, full time in the dark blue and part time in the lighter blue and everywhere that data is present in these three charts you can see the color is consistent. And that means 
when we have a chart like this one that doesn't have full time and part time, we really should be applying a different color. So let's do that. We'll change this one to this green color. Actually, let's change it so that the lighter green is for the active employees. It just helps the new hires stand out a bit more. Separations also needs to be a different color. And over here we've got turnover in gray. So it would make sense to be consistent and use a gray scale for the separations. Now we could do that for termination reason as well, but because the data in here is involuntary and voluntary versus separations and bad hires, I don't want to use gray again because that could get confusing. So let's go with a green color theme. We've got the involuntary in dark green and voluntary in the lighter green. So that's enough with the color formatting. The next thing I want to point out is sometimes you get a data set much like this one where they lend themselves to multiple dashboards. And I've really only touched the surface of this data and yet my dashboard is full. I could easily create another dashboard focusing on staff turnover and separations. Now I don't have time to create another dashboard here, but I want to show you how you can have two dashboards in your file and allow the user to toggle between them. So let's add a new sheet. We'll pretend this is our second dashboard. We'll call it separations dashboard. And let's just rename this one actives dashboard just to differentiate it. So I'll insert some shapes that look like sheet tabs or file tabs. And we'll just pop them in up here and I'll copy that so they're the same size. Actually, let's make them a little bigger. I've got a bit more space. Okay, so I want one tab to be white and that will imply that it's not selected. So this will be my separations dashboard button and this one will be my actives dashboard button. Let's just select them and let me pin that or we'll make the font smaller so it fits in. Okay. All right. So now what I want to do is create a hyperlink from this dashboard to my separations dashboard. So let's do that. Control K to open the hyperlink menu. We're going to go to a place in this dashboard that is the separations dashboard sheet. So now when I click on it, it will take me there. Let's just copy the formatting across so that when we set up that dashboard, it's consistent. Okay. And then I can just copy these buttons. Control C to copy them. Let's paste them in there. All right. Let me just zoom out. So we're looking at it at the same scale and we'll get rid of the grid lines. All right, so what I want to do with this one is actually get rid of the hyperlink from this sheet. So we're going to remove the hyperlink and we're going to format this one in the blue. And this is going to be the one that contains my hyperlink and that's going to be white. So control K, we're going to send this button will take you back to the actives dashboard. So now if I click actives, it takes me to the actives dashboard. If I click separations, it takes me to the separations dashboard. And obviously you'd have a dashboard on this sheet that looked very similar in terms of its layout, but the content would all be separations related. And so this just allows the user to toggle between the two sheets and unbeknownst to them, it may not even look like Excel. You could get rid of the ribbon. We could get rid of the headings. And all of a sudden it doesn't look very much like Excel at all. You can even hide the sheet tabs. So they literally just have these buttons to toggle between. Okay. So you've seen how easy it was to get the data from the 47 files, combine it into one table and then analyze it in pivot tables and pivot charts. But what happens when we get December's data? So you can see it only goes up to November here. Well, let's just simulate that. So in this folder here, I have a CSV file for December. So let me just control C to copy that. I'm going to go back to where all my other data is and paste it in here. So if I scroll down now, you'll see I have a file for December and all I need to do is go back to my Excel file, go to the data tab, click refresh all. And if you keep an eye on this pivot chart here, you'll see 
the December data gets added automatically. So at the moment, Power Query is going away. It's grabbing all the files, consolidating them, adding that December file in. And then it adds it to Power Pivot and it refreshes all the pivot tables. And you can see now we have December included in the report. And I haven't had to do anything. I've literally clicked one button, refresh all, and Power Query and Power Pivot have done all the work for me because I set it up so that it would automatically update. Now there's one last thing I want to show you. Over here, I've got some icons and I'm just going to bring them into the chart. They're going to be a visual indicator of what the chart is about. First of all, I'm just going to turn on select objects so that they're easy to select. I'll left click and drag to select them all. And I want to bring them to the front so that when I place them on the chart, they're in front of the chart. So let's just turn select objects off. Okay, so active employees, this one goes over here. It's like a name tag. We've got ethnic group and we'll have to do some slight formatting to realign the chart titles. So this one needs to come over a little bit and this one. Okay. And then we've got separations and the last one is for the termination reason, the little information icon. And again, they're just icons. They're available in Excel 2019 on the insert tab under illustrations and then icons. And they're also available if you have Office 365. They're not necessary for all dashboards. It's just a nice visual indicator and adds a bit more interest to your charts. Now there's probably a little bit of formatting we can do to tidy things up, but I'm not going to waste time on that. Really the message I wanted to convey in this webinar was to show you how amazing Power Query and Power Pivot are for building reports in Excel and how quick and easy it is to update them once you've set them up. If you like this video, please take a moment to click the like button, subscribe to my channel and share the video with your colleagues and friends. And if you'd like to have a go at building this dashboard yourself, well, there's a link in the video description where you can download the workbook and data files. Now I know I ran through this quite quickly because I wanted to show you as much as I could so you could get a feel for Power Query and Power Pivot, but it's really just the beginning. Although my data source was CSV files, it's important to know that Power Query and Power Pivot can connect to a huge range of different data sources. So if your data is in an external system or database, or even multiple systems, then you can easily get it and clean it with Power Query, mash it up and analyze it in Power Pivot, and then report on it in Excel. And the best part is next month, you just click the refresh button and your work is done. And the added benefit of learning Power Query and Power Pivot is those skills are transferable to Power BI because these same tools are integrated into Power BI Desktop. So you get double the bang for your buck. Now, if you'd like to get up to speed with Power Query and Power Pivot fast, then please consider getting my courses so you can start impressing your boss and colleagues with reports and dashboards that leverage these amazing tools. There's a link in the video description where you can find out more information on the courses and sign up. And if you have any questions, be sure to email me website at myonlinetraininghub.com and I'll be happy to help. Thanks for your time.